basketball season, women's indoor track and field, and the second Athletics Hall of Fame. We've got a lot to cover in sports at the University of the District of Columbia. Today on Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll recap the men's and women's basketball seasons and take a look at their prospects for postseason play. We'll also check in on women's indoor track and field to see the progress that's been made by Coach McKenzie's squad. We'll take an inside look at the second UDC Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony and visit with 2013 inductees Harry Brockenberry and Stan Mullins. All that and much, much more. So stay with us on Firebird Nation Sports Update. Hello, this is Firebird Nation Sports Update, your inside look at the University of the District of Columbia Athletics. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. Flap your wings and get ready to soar because the Firebird is rising in the nation's capital. Men's and women's basketball season has been filled with peaks and valleys, as both teams have struggled with inconsistency, but also shown flashes of greatness. The men's basketball team has struggled for much of the year due to a depleted roster, and they sit at 5-19. and 19. But the good news is they have won three of their last five games. The question is, will they have enough to get into the ECC postseason? While they're not officially eliminated yet, the stars will have to be perfectly aligned for them to have a chance. Despite a rough start to the season, the Firebirds are still just two games back of Dowling for the sixth and final ECC playoff spot. UDC is led on offense by junior transfer guards Kwasim Jones and Michael Terry. Jones leads the team in scoring with 14 points per game and ranks second in the ECC with close to five assists per game, while Terry averages just under 14 points per game. Ralph Watts has emerged as a marquee scorer for the Firebirds, coming off a week where he earned ECC Co-Player of the Week and averaged 21 points per game to lead the Firebirds to their first back-to-back -back wins of the season. The women's basketball team has shown it can compete with any team in the East Coast Conference, but wins have been hard to come by for this young but talented Firebirds squad. After starting the season 6-5, the women's team has lost 13 of their last 15 games. That's a tough stretch. Sophomore guard Danica Brent has emerged as one of the league's most well-rounded players, ranking 13th in scoring with 11 points per game and 13th in rebounding with 6 per game. She's also 8th in steals and 11th in blocks. Senior guard Janelle Jr. averages in double figures as well with over 10 points per game. With only two games remaining, the Firebirds have been eliminated from postseason play. The indoor track and field season has been a huge success for head coach Alton McKenzie and his up-and-coming Firebird squad. Individual and relay performances continue to shatter previous bests and rack up NCAA provisional qualifying marks. UDC has vaulted to number eight in the East Re Region rankings. Junior Shauna K. Creary is having a breakout season, complete with two NCAA provisional qualifying marks in the long jump and the triple jump and two consecutive East Coast Conference Women's Field Athlete of the Week honors in the month of January. The 4x400 meter relay team has also been a force to be reckoned with for the Firebirds, not only in the East region, but nationwide as well. At the Patriot Games at George Mason on January 26, the team of Marlena Wright, Kadian Jones, Rochelle Nelson, and Simone Grant finished second overall, running the 17th best time in Division II this season and placing them as the 11th best Division II school in the event overall. The Firebirds now look ahead to the ECC Indoor Track and Field Championships, and hopefully the NCAAs as well. In other news, the second ever Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony took place on Friday, February 15th. It was a tremendous success. The star-studded class of inductees included UDC track and field coaching legend Stan Mullins, and District of Columbia Teachers College basketball star, Harry Brockenberry, both of whom will be joining us on the show today. The inductees also included DCTC basketball coach, Hiram Dutch Uselaner, DCTC football and basketball student athlete, Dr. Michael Glasgow, and former DCTC president, Dr. Paul Phillips Cook. The event, which included a reception, dinner, and induction ceremony, was held at Maggiano's of Little Italy, and was attended by more than 125 of the Firebird faithful. The Master of Ceremonies was James Butch McAdams, 
UDC class of 1981. The evening featured speeches from several members of the senior staff of the athletic department, as well as university chief operating officer, Dr. Rachel Petty. Each inductee, or a representative of the inductee for those who were inducted posthumously, were given an opportunity to speak as well. Each inductee also was represented in a slideshow. Events such as this remind us that we need to make time to honor the past while we also continue to build for the future. Special thanks to Associate Director of Athletics, Patrick Knapp, who worked tirelessly to pull the event together. Great job, Patrick. For a full write-up on the, all the inductees and the Hall of Fame, please visit our website at udcfirebirds.com. We're going to take a short break. When we return, you're going to hear firsthand about the Hall of Fame from inductees Harry Brockenberry and Stan Mullins. So stay with us. We're now joined by Men's Basketball Athletics Hall of Fame inductee Harry Brockenberry. Harry, thanks for being with us today. It's a pleasure. First of all, congratulations on this tremendous honor. Mm -hmm. uh, last weekend was the induction ceremony for the Athletics Hall of Fame. What are your thoughts looking back on the event? Man, I tell you, I will cherish that event the rest of my life, and I never felt so warm, so much love and warmth uh, in my life. And it, I, now I know how President Obama felt when everybody stands up and <laughs> say, hell to the chief, because everybody stood up, man. I, I, it's, it's quite an experience, you know, and I wish everybody could experience that moment, you know, but uh, I really enjoyed it, you know. One of the things that you said is that you never expected that type of honor. You said that during your induction ceremony speech. No, I didn't. I didn't expect that, you know, because uh, most of those uh, honors go to most of the elite players. You know, I never thought I was uh, an elite player, even when I grew up. You know, I played against a lot of elite players, but I never thought that something like that would, uh, would happen to me. And, I'm, and it kind of made, made me feel good because someone remembered, you know, that, uh, and they considered me to be an elite player. That's what I was going to say. You mm -hmm. may not consider yourself no. an elite player, but mm -hmm. evidently you were. <laughs> Somebody thought about it. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, mm -hmm. you were, just so I can educate the viewers, you were a graduate of Washington Technical Institute yes. in 1973, mm -hmm. and then you went on to the District of Columbia Teachers College, right. graduated from there in 1975, mm -hmm. and you were known as one of the most prolific scorers in D.C. history, and, and certainly in university history, and mm -hmm. then also Washington, D.C. history. Now, as you look at back at your days as a student athlete, mm -hmm. uh, your playing days and, and your just student career, what are your fondest memories looking back? Well, I have a, I have a lot of memories uh, on those days. Uh, when I played with Washington Tech, it was a, uh, we were in the JUCO conference, and there were a lot of guys in that conference then. I think McAdoo, Bob McAdoo played in that conference, and a whole lot of other pro players played in the JUCO conference. And uh, it was very competitive very competitive everywhere we went. And some of the players that played with me at Washington Tech, we had Big Mike Odoms, uh, Rudy Williams. Uh, they were two of the most dominant players that played in that, in that, in that conference. And our, uh, we had a coach, uh, Will Thomas. He played with the Globetrotters. And we would uh, always try these Globe try to plays out there. You know, we had a lot of fun Did doing. Did they work for you? No, <laughs> they didn't work. So we wound up winning. You know, but it was quite an experience, and it was quite a learning experience because uh, everything was new to me. Everything was new to me. Now I understand we were talking earlier, and you also mentioned at the ceremony you didn't even have a gym when you played. No, <laughs> it was a little matchbox over at Minor Teachers College. Talk about overcoming adversity. You know, how you? How were your team so successful and you so successful without a gym? Well, we, you know, most of us played on the playground before we even had a gym. You know, like that, and so we just made the most of it. We uh, we practiced over at, uh, at DC Teachers in the Minor Building, which had a small gym, gymnasium there. A lot of the guys from American universities would come in and play us. You know, Gordon Stiles uh, came in. Uh, there were several other good ball players who come in and practice with us. You know, but uh, it didn't make any difference whether we had a gym or no gym. We just went out. We just loved to play the game, and that's the, the important thing of it. You know, and when we went to another person's gym, or another school's gym, uh, we compensated. You know, being on a big floor like that, and uh, we didn't have a problem with it. You know. Now, you were a team captain at DCTC, you were MVP at WTI, <laughs> you were a Reslin Henley Award winner, which is the most prestigious award to a student athlete in the department. Uh, you were all conference, all these accolades as a, as a student athlete. 
Where does this Hall of Fame award rank with some of those other things you did earlier in your career? Well, the Hall of Fame <laughs> ranks highest uh, out of all the awards. Uh, behind that would be the, the Henley Award because I knew the, uh, the Henley family. Uh, I grew up with uh, Lynn Henley, uh, very, very uh, intelligent. He loved uh, basketball, and it was an honor for me to get that award. You know, I think I got it basically for academics more so than athletics, you know, because when you went to D.C. Teachers, it was uh, studying first. And athletics came second in that, you know. And all those other awards, I just happened to, um, I, I, I was just fortunate enough to be chosen for, for these honors, you know. And you mentioned the academics, and we'll talk a little bit about your career path in a second. But when you went to DCTC, mm -hmm. you knew that you wanted to get into teaching and into administration. Oh, yeah. That was the whole point of it. Yes. I, I think I was encouraged by my professors at, uh, at uh, DC Teachers. Uh, matter of fact, one of them told me I should have been in Harvard somewhere, you know, and I should have been a principal. I didn't take it serious then, you know, but uh, after I got out of D.C. Teachers, uh, I, I uh, got my first job at Burdick Vocational High School, and I taught social studies, but I majored at D.C. Teachers in ancient, medieval, and modern history. Wow. And, um, and I lo just love history. I still do a lot of uh, historical stuff today, especially with D.C. Uh, history. Um, I started at uh, Burden Vocational High School, which was a girls, all-girls school, and I coached the girls' basketball team. From there, I uh, got a job at Dunbar Senior High School. I was a uh, girls' coach there. We were in the championship games for the last for three years that I was there, and I taught uh, ancient history there. And uh, from there, we, uh, we started a uh, special education program for kids with special needs, uh, the Buchanan Learning uh, center, and went there, from there I went downtown and worked for the last 15 years at Central Office, you know, where I was a special education specialist, and I did a number of uh, things with the superintendents down there as, as a specialist, and uh, uh, I ended my career at the uh, D.C. Uh, PS after 31 years, and uh, uh, opened up an ice cream parlor, uh, and uh, along with my uh, my uh, my wife, who passed last January, um, and been there ever since. I, I we'll, we'll let you get a word in about your ice cream shop. It's Island Ice Cream on 34th <laughs> Street in Mount Rainier. Yes. So uh -huh. uh, it's important that the viewers know about that. Um, and what, do you have any words of wisdom for young student athletes who maybe are at the UDC right now who want to excel in sports, they also want to do well in school, and then possibly pursue a career path, teaching, administration? Anything that you would recommend from your experience for them, something that you did that you think would be helpful for them to know? Yes, I, I just think they have to just hang in there, you know, because um, the life is not a rose garden, you know. You're going to have your ups and downs, you know. And uh, whether you uh, get into sports, sports can also be a, a way that you can uh, succeed. Everybody that was at that uh, Hall of Fame started the same way that I did. We all came through... Uh, we started in high school, and we ended up uh, achieving in D.C. public schools or wherever they went. I can name him, Tony Upson. Uh, Who was an inaugural inductee into the Hall of right, Fame. As I should mention, so was Reslin Henley, Reslin Henley a year ago. Uh, Dr. Stewart, uh, he, uh, he was very encouraging. Um, uh, Catfish Bradford, uh, known as, yeah, he, he played for uh, UDC, uh, Fellow City College one. He had a lot of moves, I mean, uh, but, you know, they started out, and they're still encouraging kids. Every last one of those guys there, along with uh, some more, uh, um, Frazier, uh, who teaches at Cardoza. He coached girls at the Cardoza when I was coaching at Dunbar. Uh, he taught English. Uh, all these individuals made a difference in the lives of kids, and that's what it's all about. It's all about the kids. It wasn't about us making all met and all that, but even though we had uh, uh, encourage other kids to be, to succeed, whether they succeeded in sports or in academics. And I often tell them, put academics first and whatever you want to do next, because if you're going to play basketball, the ball will deflate sooner or later, you know. And, uh, and that's a good lesson. Mm -hmm. Use athletics as a vehicle to get your education yes, and to uh -huh. go on to do some good. So yes. that's, that's a great lesson. Now let's switch back to to basketball specifically, you led the area in scoring uh, with 26 and 28 points and 73 and 75 
Um, at the induction ceremony, the master of ceremonies, Butch McAdams, <laughs> had a, uh, a saying that said, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. Um, <laughs> what was your style of play like uh, as a player? Well, I, I, uh, I never played guard. Most people look at me and think I was, right now I look like a football player, but then I was like 175 pounds, real skinny kid, but I got knocked out knocked off the block all the time with the bigger players. Evidently, you could jump through the roof, though. From I don't know. I tried to get up there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to because most of the guys were bigger. I tried to get up there before they could, they could get up there. But, uh, yeah, I played forward, and sometimes I jumped center. And I think in the Potomac Intercollegiate Conference of that time, I was the leading shot blocker. Uh, and I think guys look at me, and they just say, he can't do this or do that. But um, I just had to compensate for uh, my height, I'm jumped against guys 6'9", 6'10", um, but they had a hard time with me also because I could, uh, I could jump high, I'm gifted with that ability. But there were a lot of leapers around during that time, and uh, it was a lot of competition, you know. But uh, I think uh, in that audience that uh, those guys were at the Hall of Fame, it probably wasn't a lot, uh, a lot of basketballs out there for all of us because yeah. all of them like to shoot. <laughs> That's great. Well, mm -hmm. Harry, you have some great stories. I can sit here and listen to them all oh, yeah. day. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're out of time. But I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been it's, a great pleasure having you on. And you're a great role model for all the student well, athletes you. at UDC. I appreciate being and, here. And, and hopefully we'll keep you connected with UDC into the future. Oh, yeah. I definitely will be connected. Great. Well, when we come back, we'll visit with track and field coaching legend Stan Mullins. So stay with us. We're now joined by former UDC track and field coach and 2013 Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Coach Stanley Mullins. Coach Mullins, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much. First Appreciate and foremost, it. congratulations on the amazing honor. Well, you know what? I was so excited when I got the call um, to say that I was um, one of the inductees. I, I mean, that was so, so, so very exciting for me. Uh, I have so many fond memories of this university. It's just unreal. That's great. And one of the things you said in your acceptance speech that I found interesting, you said, I'm just an old coach. And uh, <laughs> your humility really comes through um, in speaking with you and, and certainly in your speech at the event. How did you feel like, when you were up there receiving the award? Oh, I, I was almost speechless. Um, like I said, I'm just an old coach who just liked doing what, what he can do. and. There's no secret to what I do. Uh, I've been coaching for about 43 years. Um, but being up on that, that stage and um, being in, in, in the environment with the other inductees was just breathtaking for me. That's great. And, and just so that the viewers know, you were at UDC from eight, 1982 to 1992. Absolutely. Uh, you touched many lives at that time. You coached many student athletes. Yes. Um, when you look back on your time at the university, who are some of the people that you think fondly about? Uh, you, you mean in terms of athletes? Athletes and coaches, I would say. Okay, well, one person that comes to mind is Will Jones. Uh, Will used to call me milk worker. <laughs> and I, Who's I, the bas former basketball former coach, basketball uh, 1982 coach. national championship coach. Absolutely, we, we had a, a great relationship. And he would say, coach, I don't know. I don't know how you're doing this. I don't know how you're doing this. I'm going to call you a uh, miracle worker. <laughs> and he was doing some pretty good things himself. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And we would always sit and talk and uh, compare notes and what have you about how to get the most out of our athletes here at the university. And you both certainly did that. Uh, both you and he had great teams. Um, Thank you. What about some of the student athletes as you look back? Who are some of the performers that you, you think fondly about as you look back? Oh, my goodness. If, if I start naming names, I, I will probably get some repercussions from <laughs> that, too. But um, I had uh, several outstanding athletes. Anthony Brown comes to, uh, to mind. He has uh, since passed away, uh, unfortunately. Mm. But um, uh, Sherwin Burgess, um, Gregory Barnes, the sprinters, mm -hmm. um, they, they were just so outstanding. I, I had about 17 All-Americans. I know that. That's, <laughs> that's impressive. And, yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about that. You experienced incredible success at a lot of different levels, high school, 
college, you coached elite level athletes. Absolutely. Um, kind of on the club level. Uh, you were named to the DC Coaches Association yes. uh, Hall of Fame in 2002. Absolutely. Um, the list goes on and on. You were a PG <laughs> County track coach three times, track coach of the year three times, Potomac Valley Association track coach in 2010, which yes. is very recent, uh, while you were at Potomac Senior High School. Yes. What do you attribute your success to? Well, just um, determination and, and having a love for the sport and also developing young folks in terms of um, their potential and not, not only on the track, but also uh, in their everyday lives. Uh, that, that was very important to me and it still is important to me that um, um, that, that takes place, you know? Absolutely, and, and just so people understand, you coached at a number of different places. Yes. I'll try and get the years right. <laughs> uh, you were at Cardoza for three years, you were yes. at H.D. Woodson for 10 years, UDC for 10 years, Howard for two years, Potomac Senior High School for 11 years. You coached elite runners for four years. Yes. I know I missed some years or may have had a couple of those a little bit off, but that's yeah. over 40 years of coaching. Yes. Did you ever think about doing anything else? No. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and, and you know, I was, I was talking with my wife not long ago and I told her, I said, you know, from high school, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, I majored in physical education, health and physical education when I went to college uh, at Kentucky State University. Uh, I had great mentors when I was in high school. And uh, I, I just knew that, that that was the way that I wanted to go. Um, is, a lot of people have other avenues that, that they travel, but I, I knew that mine was going to be in athletics. That's great, and, and over the, your career, how did you stay fresh in your approach? As a coach, you have to be demanding. You have yes. to be very disciplined and, and hold your student athletes to a high standard. Absolutely. How did you keep that edge and, and, and keep your runners moving in the right direction all the time? Well, just being honest with them and, have, and getting their trust. I, I think that's, that was one of the keys uh, to my success. Uh, the athletes knew that, that I was for them, not only in terms of what they could do in athletics, but, but, but in life, period. And I have athletes coming back to me even today saying, Coach, you, you saved my life. You, 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 you helped me through some difficult times. You, you cared about me, and, and um, I, I just love you. Yeah, that, that's really <laughs> special to be able to make that kind of impact on young people's lives. So Absolutely. I guess that's how you kept your edge. That's it. And a lot of people don't realize that um, during all that time, I was still teaching. I was still teaching um, in, in high school. So while you were coaching at UDC, you were teaching? I was teaching at H.D. Woodson Senior High School. I spent 30 years at H.D. Woodson uh, as a, a health and physical education teacher. And that's one of the things I talked about with Harry Brockenberry earlier on the show is that so many of the people that came from this university are educators, which is really Absolutely. fabulous. Absolutely. Obviously with the DCTC background, but then also University of the District of Columbia, it seems yes. to be something that a lot of people get involved in, which is great. Yes, absolutely. Now let me, let me talk to you a little bit about, we talked about the different levels, high school, college, elite, mm -hmm. runners. Which level did you enjoy coaching the most? All of them. All of them, <laughs> all, equally. All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed working with young folks, uh, whether it's on an elementary level, and I, I also coach club uh, uh, age group track and field. And we're talking about kids who are like seven, eight, nine, wow. ten years old. That's fun. Yes. Yeah, during the summer months. So a different outlook for them as the elite runners, but a lot of the same coaching principles. Yes, absolutely. That's great. Now, looking back to your time you mentioned at Kentucky State, you were a very good runner in your own right. Tell us a little bit about your career as a runner. Well, I could get around the track. Yeah. I could get around the track pretty good. Uh, I, I got a four-year uh, athletic scholarship at Kentucky State, and I was on some of the, the fastest relay teams that were run during that particular time. Um, we won the prestigious um, pin relays. Uh, in fact, we were ranked indoors uh, back in the 60s, uh, I, I can't really remember <laughs> the year, but uh, we were ranked number one in the nation wow. uh, in the four by, four by four relay. 
That's, a, that's very impressive. Now, getting back to what you mentioned earlier, you coach 17 men's and women's All-Americans. Yes. Also 32 All-ECAC conference performers. Absolutely. And some amazing teams as well. What are some of the most memorable performances by either relay teams or individuals that you recall? Interesting that you asked me that because I had one young man, his name was Clifford Massey. And um, I, I never will forget this. We were in a meet at, up at Princeton and he, he ran the 800 meters for us. Um, he stepped on the inside um, edge of the track and twist his knee. And, and he had to have surgery on, on that knee. And he was out for um, one year, and he was so determined to get back on the track uh, the following year, which was, I, I thought was quite amazing, and, and he did. He had the surgery for, for the repair of the knee, to repair the knee, and lo and behold, he, that following year, he qualified uh, for the NCAA Division II Championship. He ran 150 uh, in, the, in the 800 meters, and it was done at Howard University. We went there for like an all-comers meet, and hoping that we were going to get lots and lots of competition. And when we got there, he was the only one in the open 800. And at that particular time, Coach Bill Maltry was the coach at Howard. Right. And I said, well, Coach, uh, this kid is trying to qualify for the Division II championships, and he needs to run at least a 151 half. But there, there are no other 800-meter uh, people here. He said, well, Coach, just let him run. And believe it or not, this kid ran all by himself, 150.7, wow. all by himself. And I thought that was so remarkable. That's, that is a remarkable story, coming back from the injury and, and to accomplish yes. that. That's great. Well, Absolutely. Coach, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're out of time. Uh, really some great <laughs> stories. And uh, honestly, no one is more deserving of this Hall of Fame honor than you. We really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, but most importantly, we appreciate what you've done for UDC and for the community as well. So. Thank you very much for thank, being on the show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank our guests, Harry Brockenberry and Stan Mullins. Please don't forget to follow Firebird Athletics on the web at udcfirebirds.com, on Twitter at udcfirebirdfans, on Facebook at UDC Athletics, and on YouTube at UDC Athletics One. Thanks for watching Firebird Nation Sports Update. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. The Firebird is rising in the nation's capital, and we're glad you're along for the ride.